As we read the Megillah this Purim, it dawned on me that last Purim, the Purim of 2020, was for many of us the last time we celebrated a holiday in a normal fashion, surrounded by our communities and families. For some of us, even last Purim was atypical and spent in isolation. This past year has been a total v'nahafohu. It's been anomalous and even surreal. We found ourselves in unfathomable situations, making decisions we never thought we'd have to make, spending much of the year self-isolating, deprived of physical contact, hiding behind masks, and conducting much of our lives, both personal and professional, confined to the frame of a Zoom box. Rereading our Parsha, Kiti Sa, at this point in time, filled me with a newfound empathy towards Aharon. Moshe left him and Chur in charge when he ascended the mountain with Yoshua, instructing the elders, the Zkenim, to wait for him at the foot of the mountain. He didn't take any provisions, nor did he share with them details about his return. The biblical narrative tells us Moshe was absent for 40 days and 40 nights. For the Israelites, recently freed from slavery, surviving in a desert, Moshe's absence becomes a cause of great stress. This is a people with a, slave, with a slave mentality, a people totally dependent on their leader, their savior, and their miracle maker, Moshe, a people whose leader has essentially abandoned them in the middle of a desert, disappeared. And with him, so did their sense of security and purpose. He was their anchor, and he gave structure to their existence. Aharon is left in the lurch. In many ways, he was one of them. He, too, was a slave in Egypt. As Moshe's brother and helper, he was closer to the action. But he wasn't the one who spoke with God or performed all the miracles. I imagine that he, too, was wondering what happened to Moshe and questioning whether his brother was okay. However, Aharon doesn't lose faith in God or in the people. He is both compassionate and addresses the situation in a language which, which the people of Israel can understand. The outcome of this episode is what's known as Chet Ha'egel, the sin of the golden calf, which in our collective memory has become the archetype of idol worship. It is one of the two greatest sins the children of Israel transgressed while in the desert. However, when rereading the story, I couldn't help but notice that Aharon wasn't punished for leading the people astray. One would expect that he be held accountable, and yet he remains the Kohen Gadol, the high priest. The rabbis do somersaults in order to explain his way out of it, and Hillel the Elder in Pirkei Avot paints Aharon as a role model for someone who pursues peace. Ohev Shalom, Yorodef Shalom. This year, I relate to Aharon. I appreciate his actions more than ever before. Faced with an anomalous situation, with the people in a great deal of stress, with a total breakdown of their community and familiar structures and routines, Aharon finds a way to keep them engaged. He gets them involved on a personal level. He offers them a spiritual experience. The rabbis suggest that the golden calf is a conduit to God. Is this ideal? No. Would he have acted this way in a different circumstance? Probably not. Would he have liked for this to become the new normal? I'm guessing not. I find myself identifying with him this year more than ever before. Unusual circumstances call for creative thinking. Community leaders and educators stepped up this past year, thought out of the box, were resourceful and imaginative and created alternatives to offer scaffolding for their communities, while scientists and doctors found ways for us to live with the virus. We're not out of the woods yet, but I think we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. When we emerge on the other side, there will be some tools we choose to take with us and others we leave behind. This year, the story of the golden calf has a new takeaway for me. Leadership under duress calls for creativity, and ultimately, our tradition understands and has remembered Aharon as Ohev Shalom Virodef Shalom, someone who loves peace and pursues peace. Ohevet Abriot loves humans, Umbekarvan La Torah. 
and brings them closer to Torah. Shavuot from Shechter.